Thank you for calling Jigsaw Productions. For Alex Gibney, please dial extension 121 or 121. On the 5th of December 2002, an innocent Afghan taxi driver was murdered in American custody in an interrogation prison in Bagram. In 2005, New York Times journalist Coletta Gohl and Tim Golden uncovered the story. The report put pressure on the US military to investigate. However, only foot soldiers were ever charged with any wrongdoing, despite a chain of tacit approval that could be traced as high as Vice President Dick Cheney. Alex Gibney's Taxi to the Dark Side investigates the new interrogation techniques used by the US in the War on Terror. I asked Alex why his film had been able to bring global recognition to this problem where newsprint had failed. Well, sometimes film can delivers a kind of emotional power that, that words just can't match. I mean, I think words have an ability to... Um, Words have an ability to, to, to deliver a sort of an analytical power that that the film can't match. Um, but film, you know, when you see somebody's face, you hear the music, you 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 sense, you, you hear the people talking about the punishment they've delivered to him. There's something so much more potent about that that it really uh, hits you in the gut. You know, the sound of someone's voice, the the, the way Dilawar's eyes look, the the, the sense of uh, of, of knowing that this innocent kid was, was killed and you're looking into his eyes. You know, that's, that's, that can be very powerful. When I first embarked on this assessment, I paid £35 for a doco that wasn't worth the disc it was printed on. I asked Alex if he thought contemporary film was meeting its full potential as a medium. I think so, but, it, but it, it, I would say it all depends. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. You know, it's... it's uh, sometimes films come along and they just hit you in the gut and you feel like um, you have understood something or you have a kind of visceral impression uh, and, and sometimes also analytical understanding in a condensed way that, that just wasn't possible before. And you leave the theater um, with these images haunting you and reminding you, uh, reminding your psyche day after day of, uh, in this case, the horror of a certain kind of situation. Uh, so I, I think film is uh, delivering, you know, its potential, but but not always. It's not. It's too hard a thing to make a generalization about. I see some documentaries today, and they just knock me out. I, I think documentaries now, not all of them, but but many of them are operating at a at a new level, you know, that that that, that make them better than than a lot of fiction films. Republican Party candidate John McCain is featured in Taxi to the Dark Side, campaigning against harsh and potentially illegal interrogation techniques. His position is no doubt influenced by his own experiences as a tortured POW in the Vietnam War. Alex Gibney also has a personal connection to the ethics of torture. His late father was a naval interrogator during World War II and is the last interview in the film. I find it utterly inconceivable that the highest officials, Rumsfeld, Bush and Cheney, would not only countenance torture, but would actually advocate it, period. Uh, it, it, it really destroyed my faith in the American government. Because through, through World War II and the Korean War, we had the sense that we were on the side of the good guys. Uh, you would always get justice in the United States of America. You would get people would get decent treatment. And there was a rule of law. We never forgot that. That behind the facade of wartime hatreds, there was a, there was a central rule of law, which people abided by. It was something we believed. It was what made America different. I asked Alex how this personal connection affected the production process. I think at the end of the day, it aided it. I think when you know, I had the personal connection at the beginning. Um, 
but I didn't really use it. I didn't access it. I, I didn't allow it to come into the film. I think once I allowed it to come into the film, that the film got a lot better um, it, because it, it became more personal. And I think, the, just like I think the best um, nonfiction writing is a combination of great reporting and a, and a conveying of, of the author's voice to the reader, I, I think the same is true in, in doc films, that the best doc films to me uh, convey something true about the real world, but also in a way that communicates a little something about the filmmaker as well. When the filmmaker finds that, that sweet spot um, where th they're able to uh, find a voice um, for communicating something they see or, or, or perceive about the real world, that's when films are, are really working at their best. So it took me a long time to get there, but when I finally got to the personal uh, point of view, that, that I think it really helped the film. And when I decided to narrate it, I changed the narration ever so slightly so that it could convey a little bit more opinion. Not much, but a little bit more, So because I felt now it was personal. It wasn't coming from some distant place. And Because uh, I had to ask everybody else in the cutting room. You know, I suggested it one day, and I just I was almost a little shy about it. Hmm. But I suggested it, and, and we put it in, and, and I brought everybody in to look at it, and everybody said, no, no, this has got to go in. Throughout the film, Alex interviews a collection of soldiers, lawyers, victims and government officials. He also uses retrospective quotes that give the film a new level of authority. It was only the night shift. There's always a few bad apples. It's been a body blow for all of us. This is clearly uh, uh, an isolated incident. This debate is occurring because of um, the Supreme Court's ruling that said that uh, we must conduct ourselves under the common Article 3 of the Geneva Convention. And that common article three says that, you know, there will be no outrages upon human dignity. It's, it's, it's like, it's very vague. What does that mean? Many of the soldiers and victims would have been under great pressure to remain silent. I asked Alex how he managed to get these people to speak with him and break the silence. It was tough and, uh, you know, it was not easy uh, getting a hold of them, but, you know, over time, we, we managed to work it out, and part of it was spreading the word. You know, we'd get somebody who knew Damien, and we interviewed him, and then he'd pass the word to Damien that it wasn't so bad. And then we'd call up Damien, and, and also Damien's lawyer was helpful. So, you know, and I think with the soldiers, too, it was helpful in that some of them felt scapegoated. Not innocent, but scapegoated, that, that, um, that uh, they didn't understand why they were being charged when their superior officers weren't. Gibney has just finished work on his latest film, Gonzo, The Life and Work of Hunter S. Thompson. I asked him if there was any relationship between Taxi to the Dark Side and Thompson's most popular book, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which was recreated on screen by Terry Gilliam in 1998. We were somewhere around Barso on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. Well, I think you see it. I mean, you, you, you feel it. The fear and the loathing. There is a, you know, there's a dark side to most everybody. But I think that I remember the thing about the United States is there is a great sense of idealism and a great sense of possibility. But there also is a darker Some side to the country, a kind of fear and loathing. And, that's what cool Hunter called it. And you see it in Bagram. And I think what happened was, you know, when Dick Cheney said, we we're going to go over the dark side, <laughs> that's where he went, to that, that, that heart, the fear and loathing that, that Hunter Thompson describes. Never mind. It's your turn to drive. No point mentioning these bats, I thought. The poor bastard will see them soon enough. This year, Taxi to the Dark Side won an Oscar for Best Documentary. In his acceptance speech, Alex spoke about a social change that needs to take place within the US. I asked him if he thought film would play a large role in bringing that change about. I think film will play a role. Um, you know, I think one of the things, like I, I was saying, I think one of the things that film can do is to um, uh, is to 
move people in ways that they don't um, expect. And that, over time, can cause change. So I think that film can do that. 